here. Hey, let's focus on something positive real quick. Uh, even, even though there had been some negativity recently, uh, a lot of it coming from me. K-State got a pretty significant win in basketball last night, 72-71 to 71 in overtime over Villanova. A big-time win for K-State against a marquee opponent in, in Villanova who, you know, maybe this year things aren't going to go uh, necessarily as well as they have in the past. I think Kyle Neptune looked like a very frustrated coach after that loss last night. But that's still a significant win. K-State played better in that game, no matter how good or bad Villanova is this year. They're better than North Alabama and Oral Roberts. They, they played close to a full game. I thought guys were locked in. There were obviously still some of the same struggles that we've talked about and are concerned about with K-State basketball. But winning that game was massive because now it sets you up and makes you feel like you can win out in non-conference play, put yourself in a good spot. Uh, before we talk about anything that happened in that game, just in your eyes, how impactful is the win last night for K-State over Villanova? Yeah, it, it's big because, like, it's kind of a resume builder, even if, if Villanova doesn't go to the NCAA tournament. I think there's still a chance that they could. Um, but they are 6-4, and four, but they've played a tough schedule. They've actually beat some tough teams. They beat North Carolina, um, but then lost to, the you know, basically everybody in the Big Five. So, uh, a weird season is unfolding for them, but that win, I think, over time, is still going to look pretty solid to the committee when things when it comes to bear. Like when you when you're the selection committee and you're looking at Kansas State in March, you see early losses to USC and Miami. It's like okay, this team tested themselves. We like that. And then you say, and they still beat two Big East teams in Providence and Villanova. So you could say what you want about how this non-conference slate was put together, or how it's unfolded. But it's been favorable so far because you took you got two really good wins and you don't have a bad loss yet. So they're doing what they need to do. And 4-0 and is now on the table for that stretch that we talked about before when you go Villanova, LSU, Nebraska, Wichita State. So, I, look, the Wildcats, uh, are, it, I think it's very meaningful. And, and gets them feeling better about themselves. I'm big on that. I know not everybody is. But when you feel good about yourself, and what you are doing, you play better. And also, this is a team that's still trying to get into the swing of things when it comes to what the coaches want to do, the offense that they're running, cohesion defensively. Sometimes it's buy-in. Sometimes it's belief. A win like that validates a message of the coaching staff, and it's easier for the players to be like, these guys know what they're talking about. We're going to keep listening, keep listening. And then it, you know, you just stack and grow from there. Yeah, I, I think it's just I think it's big for momentum and everything else, and probably to get guys to realize, okay, we can do this. Like we are the real deal, and hopefully, it leads to more confidence from Arthur Kaluma. I think Tyler Perry is a guy that could probably use more we're, more confidence, less thinking. Yeah, uh, we're learning that um, he is definitely Mister Big Shot, not afraid of the moment. Um, it's still tough with him and the ball in his hands in, in the final possession because he's so small and can be taken advantage of that. He had the turnover in regulation, I believe. But he also still has a knack for the big play. We, we talk about the three against North Alabama and then the, the, the go-ahead three in overtime against Villanova, obviously. But what people forget is that loose ball. When yeah. they were down 71 to 67, I mm -hmm. think, and they're about to they're turn it over. They basically did turn it over. He still dives across the floor, grabs that loose ball away from two other Villanova players, still has the wherewithal to pass it to an open guy for an easy bucket, and makes it 71-69. Without that, just whatever gene that, that takes in that moment um, to defeat the odds, really, without that, they don't win the game. He doesn't even get a ch chance for that three-pointer. Yeah, no, I, I thought he came through in that moment. And after the game, I mean, Jerome Tang – you know, the, the shooting numbers weren't there again for Tyler Perry for the entirety of it, but he praised a lot of the other things that he did in the game. He, he said that he thought he had a great game, uh, did things that they liked in the first half defensively and in other uh, areas. So, I mean, I, I think that there is a way for it to work. And also, like last night, Villanova came out. Their number one goal was to make sure Tyler Perry did not get any open looks or anything that resembled an open look from three. It was – face guarding to the max and the second he got it he was getting doubled like they wanted to give no room to this tiny little guard uh and k-state was able to make enough plays happen elsewhere 
And now the hope would be Arthur Kaluma shows out like he did, 26 points, nine boards. Um, get him the ball more, let him create more, because there are too many times last night where Will McNair and David Gasson were having to make three or more dribbles on a touch. Uh, if if you're going to have a guy do that that isn't a guard, let it be Arthur Kaluma because he made things happen last night. And I think at this point in the season, uh, you just hope that the aggressiveness sticks around and he is probably your your number one option in terms of like majority of the game. Now, late game, when you need something, obviously Tyler Perry seems to be that guy. And I think, um, you know, this is this this was started by talking with fan last night, but he thinks that it's all just kind of in Tyler Perry's head, the struggles. And I kind of agree. I think I think he, he's trying to process too much. He's too in his head about, do I take the shot? Do I not? And so when he does the decide to take a shot, it comes too late in the process. And that's when you get a bad result. I, I think you want more from Tyler Perry to just let it fly early. And for Arthur Kaluma, get him the ball more. Let the guy do what he can, can because uh, he is probably, as things currently stand, playing the best for K-State. Yeah, Kaluma's playing the best. I said before my bold predictions <laughs> that two guys would score 20 or more. But I said it would be Perry and Carter. It turned out it was more what Carter and Kaluma, but Perry had the big shots. Yeah. When you're getting, when Perry's still producing in the clutch and you're getting what you got from Carter and Kaluma, that's kind of the big three at this point. Like those are the three, your three, your big three came through. I guess is what I'm saying. Like if Kansas State's going to be good, Cam Carter has to be good. Arthur Kaluma has to be good. Tyler Perry has to be good. For much of the night, I get it. Tyler Perry wasn't good. But he's good when he when it counted, and and at the end of the day, that that still works, you know. At least it worked against Villanova. So, um, I think they need Tyler Perry to be the best shooter in America. I think that he is, and I, or at least that he's capable of it. I'm not saying he's not, but he's just got to instead of it being you know a statement, you know, in a press conference or that I write because I believe that Tyler Berry is the best three-point shooter in America, he's got to go do it too. And it could be, could be in his head because, you know, in those moments where he's coming through and he's hitting the clutch threes, there is less thinking in those situations. Yeah. No, I yeah, I 100% agree with that. Uh, and I just think, think less, let it go. You you can do this and, you know, all the struggles, whatever. And I think we also saw that, like, in, in desperate times in – like the game against Miami where, where you, you know, where things started to, to kind of fall and like other games throughout the year where it's like, you can get hot, like just, you can play with a little bit more. I mean, honestly, at first I was concerned that Tyler Perry would come in here and try and play like Marquise Noel, uh, even though like there, you know, there's a little bit of difference in how they, they play. But I, I honestly think at this stage, drum tang needs to, to have the, you know, the vitamin conversation with Tyler Perry where it's like you can take some of those that you know most would consider a bad shot, like have the confidence, go ahead and do it. Uh, and I think the more that we see that, the, probably the better that Tyler Perry's game will work out. Because here's the thing, like I was, I was asking Fan about this last night, like how much of his shots at North Texas were coming like off of just being catch and shoot or like in a position to grab it and, and let it fly as opposed to creating his own shot. And it was like, well, 55% of his shots there came off the dribble. So, like, he can do it, and it's not like the the size and the talent that he's faced so far this season is all that different than what he saw at North Texas. Like, yes, you've played three high major opponents, but we've seen struggles against bad teams. That's why, at the end of the day, it does seem like it's probably a confidence thing for him. And uh, obviously, if there's a, a coach and a staff that can get him to be more confident and get him in the right headspace, it's absolutely Jerome Tang and, and this crew. They know how to do that for these guys. Uh, but last night, doesn't matter how it looked at times, a lot of positives. You beat Villanova. Now go take care of business in Baton Rouge and uh, see what next week brings when uh, you, you get kind of a week off in the Nebraska and Wichita State in rapid succession. Yeah, I. you go 4-0 and oh, in that stretch. You feel great about yourself. We said 3-1 and one was okay. Yeah, and now I do think they go 4-0. Oh. <laughs> I, this last night was the game that I thought they could lose, even though I said yesterday I thought K State would win. Uh, I, LSU's, I LSU's a trap game, though I think. Yep. Yeah, we'll see uh, what the the Tigers bring about. But all right, well that will do it for us here on the KSO show. Covered a lot with Colin Klein, Avery Johnson, K State basketball, all that stuff. 
If more news comes out, we will obviously have it for you over at K-State Online. You can find us on On3 and then also stay locked into everything going on here with the YouTube and the podcast platforms to keep you up to date on the Wildcats and in the know with the fun and not so fun situations that uh, surround K-State at this point in time. So for Derek Young, I am Mason Voth. Thank you for watching K-State Online.